Hi everyone, it's Sorkin. Today we have a problem when we are given an array where we need to partition the array into contiguous subarrays, contiguous subarrays of length at most k. After partitioning, each subarray has their value changed to become the maximum, the maximum value of the of that subarray. So what's that mean? So for example, in this case, we have this array and our k is equals to three. So we need to, for example, we are partition. We can partition in any way that we want. So we are partitioning, taking this th first three numbers and the last three numbers because our k is equals to three, and we are changing the values to maximum, right? So we are changing that to fifteen because maximum in this subarray is fifteen, and here is also fifteen. Here it's ten, and it's ten, right? So and. Uh, so our goal is to return the largest sum of the given array after partitioning. So let's say we are partitioning in this way, but we may partition in different way. Let's say that we may choose that the k is equals to. So let's say that we are choosing that the these three subarrays, right? This one, these two subarrays, this, this, and this. But in this case, the sum will be lower than eighty-four. So we need to choose. We need to partition in a way that we get the maximum sum. Also, another requirement is that uh, another input is that uh, the test cases are generated in a way so that the answer fits thirty-two bits integer. So which means that the, our sum is will be less than thirty-two bit integer. There are two ways how we can solve this problem. So we are going to use the, we are going to solve this problem using a dynamic programming, mainly bottom up approach and the top down approach. So any problem that we can solve with the dynamic program bottom up approach, we can also solve with the top down approach. So let's start with the with the easiest one. Let's start with the bottom up approach. Let's say we have this example, right? 1 15 7 and 9, right? So for this example, how, and the k is equals to three. So how we are going to solve this problem? Let's say let's start with the basic. Let's say that we are only taking one element, right? If we are taking only one element, what are the options? And let's create an array with the, exactly the size of our size of our array, where we are going to store our pre-computed results. So let's call it dp for the dynamic programming so for the first one right if let's say that the, we have only one value so what would be the possible so what what is the what is the, what are the option for us so if we have only one value the 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 sum the maximum sum is only one right but let's say we have only 50 we have 15 right we have two values now we have two values so we have two options here the first option is that the, our k is equals to three right we can take them separately 15 plus one that's what we're exactly doing here so first we are taking 15 and then we are so we are taking these two separately right 15 plus one is 16 and the next one is that the, we are checking we are taking so we are taking one we are for for these two elements right we are taking them separately and then then we are taking them together because our k is equals to three so we can do that right so if we are taking them separate if we are taking them together what's the maximum between one and 15 it's 15 15 multiplied by two it equals to 30 right so we are updating this value now let's go to the next one the next one is again the next one is what next one is seven so the how many options do we have here so we have option seven plus whatever the maximum is here right so we are taking first taking the first element so first we are taking the seven itself right so first we are taking the this window seven right so if we are taking seven seven plus whatever the maximum so we have already calculated the value here whatever the maximum is here the maximum is here is, here is 30 so 30 plus 7 is 37 so 37 and the next one is what next one is for three elements right now we are considering three elements well for the three elements we have we consider it for the three elements we consider it seven uh, independently now we are taking seven and uh, five right so now we are taking seven and fifteen the second and third element for the second and fifteen what is the max value here the max value here is fifteen so fifteen multiplied by 
15 multiplied by 2 is 30, plus whatever the maximum is here, right? The maximum here, we already calculated, it's 1, so we are updating this value. It's just 31, so we are keeping the same value, right? 37 stay the same. So, and the last one is that we are taking all these three values, right? So we consider it 1, we consider these two elements, now we are considering all these three elements. What is the maximum for, for 15, 7, and uh, 15, 7, and uh, uh, one so it's uh, 15 so 15 multiplied by by 3 so because we are taking now three elements right so we are updating that value here to 45 again the next element is the same so first we are taking we are taking 9 so 9 we are taking only this one element right we are only taking one element here so we are only taking one element 9 plus 45 gives us what gives us 54 so we are updating the value here to 54 and the next one is that we are taking 7 9 and uh, so we took only 9 right now we are taking 9 and 7 now we are taking 9 and 7 and so what's the maximum here 9 and 7 maximum is 9 so 9 multiplied by 2 plus whatever the max value is here the max value is here is 30 so 30 plus 18 gives us what gives us 48 which is less than 54 so we are not updating this value so and the next one is that uh, so we are taking three elements because our k is equals to three right now we are taking k is equals to three three elements so three elements among these 15 7 and 9 what's the maximum maximum is 15 15 multiplied by 3 is 46 45 plus 1 whatever the maximum until here right so 1 is 46 46 is less than 54 so we are we are keeping this value and at the end we are returning this value again what we did here so we are f f what we are doing here we are solving so we are starting starting from the bottom starting from the first element so we are solving that and we are storing our we are storing our value to our array and then we are building up to our solution so the only reason why we why we why we're able to solve the problem here with the nine right with the with the third index so zero first second and third index here because we already we already calculated 30 right 45 maximum for the second index and we already calculated we already calculated 30 and we already calculated one that's why we were able to calculate the value for the for four for four values this is the bottom-up approach how about the top-down approach for top-down approach let's take the same let's take the same array right our maximum let's say we have a function that we are calling for 1 15 7 and 9 and what's the k in this case k is equals to 3 right again k is equals to 3 so what we do here what are our our, our options so we are taking first first one plus now we are looking recursively for maximum of 15 7 and 9 right so again so for this one for for this max function what we do we are taking we are taking 15 plus max value whatever whatever 7 and 9 will return us so for this function again we are calling 7 plus whatever max value of 9 will return us right and for the max of 9 for the max of 9 so we are backtracking from here because for the max of 9 it's it's it returns us what it returns us it returns us 9 and we are we are taking this value right so we are for this value for max is equals to 9 we have already solved that sub problem so what's that mean it means that the, let's put our indexes here it's a zero index first index second and third index so if starting from the third index starting from the third index from here the maximum is is nine we have already solved that sub problem let's store that sub problem in our array again so we are storing that value so one two three four the size is is, is the same as the size of our input array right so we are creating again dp here dynamic programming array so we are storing starting from the index of of third index starting from the third index second one and zero the max value is nine so we have already solved that sub problem so now what we do so what what what, what is the other option that we have for seven and nine so this is this was our first option the next option is that uh, we are taking so 
so we took the first element plus whatever the maximum it will give us right now we so our k is equals to three so we can choose between seven and nine right between seven and nine so that was our first window so first element then we have two elements two elements so what is the maximum so this one returns us seven plus nine gives us this one right this one gives us 16. What, what this one gives us, this option gives us, this option gives us whatever the maximum value is, right? Maximum value is 9, so multiplied by 2 gives us 18. So we are, we are changing this value to also 9, so 19. So what is the maximum between, what is the maximum between 18 and uh, 16 and 18? 16 and 18, the maximum value is 18. So so we have already solved this sub problem also. So starting from the index two, right? Starting from the index two, the maximum value is 18. So also we are updating this value here in our, in our array. So in our array, and uh, now again, we are backtracking here. So we are backtracking and we are going to the next element, right? So we are going to the 15 plus seven and nine. So again, we are solving, so we solve the max seven and nine. So we solve the max nine. So now we are solving this one seven. So we are backtracking and going to the to the next next option, right? So what is the next option here? Next option is that the, so we we choose fifteen, right? Only one element in the window. Now we are choosing two elements, fifteen and the seven in the window, plus plus max of nine, right? Max of nine. So but the, but the we have already solved this problem, right? So this max nine. We have already solved this problem. That's why we are maintaining this array because the max nine, we are not gonna recursively call. We are not calling, but let's say that we have more elements here and we are gonna, we are not recursively calling it, but we are taking this value from our array. So we are taking this value from here, right? When our max is starting from the, starting from the third index. So our max value, it will max value from the third index will gives us, will give us what will give us maximum of nine. So we are returning from here, right? And we are returning here. And the last option is what? Last option is we are taking our k is equals to three, which means that we can take all these elements, right? 15, seven, and nine. So 15, seven, and nine, what is the maximum value here? Maximum value here is 15. 15 multiplied by three is 45, right? So 45, this value is 30 plus 9, 39, and this value is 15 plus 18 gives us 31. So the maximum value is here is 45. So the maximum value here is 45, which means that the, we also solve this sub problem. So we also solve this sub problem, and the starting from the index one, the maximum value is. 45. As you can see, we have two approaches here, right? We have the approach of the bottom up. So we are, we are solving the small problem and building up to our solution. But the, in case of the top down approach, we are recursively calling and, the, and the, we are solving the sub problem starting from the certain index. And then we are backtracking and the, and the, we using that solution. So for example, in the first branch, we are going to solve all these sub problems, right? But in another branch, for example, here, we are not going to solve this problem. So each problem we are actually solving once. We are solving once and we are storing that value in our two dimension, in our, in our array. So what's the time complexity here? Time complexity is of n multiplied by k, right? k is the, k is our, our window number, so our window size. And the space complexity is we are maintaining only one uh, array, right? And the space complexity is n. In this case, again, the complexity will be the same for the top-down approach because again, all these, all these cases, right? Max, uh, when the starting from the index one, index two, index three, let's say that we have much larger array, index five and so on. We are solving only this problem only only once and we are storing those values in our in our array and uh, when next time we try to solve that problem we are returning that value from our from our array uh, first take a look at the, let's take a look at the bottom-up approach so what we are doing here first thing that we are creating an array dp with the size of m plus one and we are starting from our first element right and we are maintaining another variable max. So what we do here, we are moving our j, 
we are moving our j until our j is uh, until our j is less than or equal to k and we are also making sure that the i minus j more than or equal to equal to zero so at each step as we have seen earlier right let's say that the, when the window is equals to one so we are taking only one elements we are only taking two elements three elements whatever the size of the case so we are taking the maximum so we are taking the maximum and each step we are checking that the, if the current value is so we are taking we are picking the maximum at each at each iteration uh, each iteration so dp value at that point right plus the i minus j so for example let's say that the, consider the scenario of nine right so for the for the second element so we are taking what 30 30 plus whatever the value is that the maximum at that point right so 30 plus the maximum at that point is 9 so 9 multiplied by 2 is what is is 18 so 39 so we are updating that value if that is more than our previous maximum right we are updating dp dp i at that point and at the end we are just returning the dp dpn so again the time complexity in this case in the in this and the in in case of the bottom up and the top down is um, is n multiplied by k k is so we have two for loops right so k is being the size of the k is being the size of the of our window and uh, and the space complexity is n because we are using we are using only this uh, array of integer here Okay, uh, for the top-down approach, what we do here? First thing that the, we are creating an array memo. This stands for memoization. So where we are storing our where we are storing our result, right? In order to not to calculate the same values again and again. And we are populating that with the minus one with the for every value. And then we are calling our max function where we are passing our array. We are passing k window and we are passing the index from which index we are starting and we are passing um, we are passing array of integer me memoization right memo so the first thing is our base case here so we, so when we are our index is equals to array length which means that the, this is our base case so we need to backtrack so we are returning zero if our memo index is not equals to one so which means that the, we have already solved that problem right we have already solved that problem so we don't need to explore that we don't need to explore that branch and we are returning the memo index value right away the next one is that we are setting max sum and the max element to zero we are going to use them so we are starting from the index we are whatever the minimum right index plus k or array length not to not to exceed the array length uh, we are taking the whatever the minimum is here so first thing that the, we are getting the maximum element right we are taking it the, getting the whatever the maximum element is so for example in this case 1 15 7 and 9 so let's say first we are taking the first element right first and uh, we are calling the maximum max function with these values right the next one is that the, what we do here so we are taking two elements right two elements one and the 15 so we are taking if we are taking two elements then in this case max element will be 15 right then we are calculating our max window sum max window sum is i minus index plus one so in this case it's going to be 15 plus multiplied by two so window sum is equals to 30 right so the next one is we are updating our max sum for each case so we are updating our max sum is our previous max sum that we have already calculated plus the window sum plus the window sum plus and we are recursively calling our function how we are doing that so we are calling we are passing our array we are passing k and we are passing i plus one so i plus one which means that the, for the next index it's going to start from here right so we are going to solve this sub problem and then it will recursively call this function as we have seen earlier and then again it will recursively this function and uh, until we get our result so then the after we exit this for loop so what we do we are storing the max value uh, we are storing in our memo so we are storing the whatever the max sum we have so and we are uh, we are we are returning that result 
So uh, what's the time and space complexity? Again, it's the same as, as in the um, bottom-up approach. It's uh, n multiplied by k, n is the num n is the size of the array, and the k is our window. So again, for each problem, we are solving only once. The next time when we try to solve the same problem again, we are returning from our memo, we are returning from our basically cache, we are returning the, that, that value because we have already solved that earlier. And the space complexity is of n. Okay, uh, that's it for today. Hope you like my content. If you like it, please hit the like button and subscribe my channel. See you next time. Bye.